Wednesday of the first week of Advent. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly with fuller life and light and love into this too dead, too dark, and disaffected soul that it may come with joy and willingness unto you. The morning psalm is Psalm 119, 1 through 24. Those whose way is blameless, whose walk is in the Lord's instruction, are truly happy. Those whose guard God's laws are truly happy. They seek God with all their hearts. They don't even do anything wrong. They walk in God's ways. God, you have ordered that your decrees should be kept most carefully. How I wish my ways were strong when it comes to keeping your statutes. Then I wouldn't be ashamed when I examine all your commandments. I would give thanks to you with a heart that does right. As I learn your righteous rules, I will keep your statutes. Please don't leave me alone. How can the young people keep their paths pure? By guarding them according to what you've said. I have sought you with all my heart. Don't let me stray from any of your commandments. I keep your word close in my heart, so that I won't sin against you. You, Lord, are to be blessed. Teach me your statutes. I will declare out loud all the rules you have spoken. I rejoice in the content of your laws, as if I were rejoicing over great wealth. I will think about your precepts and examine all your paths. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget what you have said. Be good to your servant so I can go on living and keeping your word. Open my eyes so I can examine the wonders of your instruction. I am an immigrant in the land. Don't hide your commandments from me. I'm worn out by longing every minute for your rules. You rebuke the arrogant, accursed people who stray from your commandments. Take all their insults and contempt away from me, because I've kept your laws. Even if rulers gather and scheme against me, your servant will contemplate your statutes. Yes, your laws are my joy. They are my most trusted advisors. The Old Testament reading for today is Isaiah 2. 1 through 11. This is what Isaiah, Amos' son, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. Peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let us go up to the Lord's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God so that he may teach us his ways and we may walk in his paths. Instruction will come from Zion, the Lord's word from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. Then they will beat their swords into iron plows, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. Come, house of Jacob, let's walk by the Lord's light. You have abandoned your people, house of Jacob. They are full of sorcerers from the east and fortune tellers. Like the Philistines, they hold hands with foreigners' children. Their land is full of silver and gold. They have countless treasures. Their land is filled with horses. They have countless chariots. Their land is filled with idols. They worship their handiwork, what their own fingers have made. Humanity will be brought down, each person laid low. Don't lift them up. Go into the rocks and hide yourself in the dust from the terror of the Lord, from the splendor of God's majesty. People's praise, gazing, will be stopped, and humanity's arrogance brought down. The Lord alone will be exalted. Our New Testament epistle 
is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 13 through 20. We also thank God constantly for this when you accepted God's words that you heard from us. You welcomed it, for it was truly what it is. Instead of accepting it as a human message, you accepted it as God's message, and it continues to work in you who are believers. Brothers and sisters, you became imitators of the churches of God in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. This was because you also suffered the same things from your own people as they did from Jews. They killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. They don't please God. They are hostile to the entire human race when they try and stop us from speaking to the Gentiles so they can be saved. Their sins are constantly pushing the limit. God's wrath has been caught up with them in the end. Brothers and sisters, we were separated from you for a little while physically, but not in our hearts. We made every effort in our desire to see you again face to face. We wanted to come to you. I, Paul, tried over and over, and Satan stopped us. What is our hope, joy, or crown, that we can brag about it in the front of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Isn't it all of you? You are our glory and joy. And the gospel reading today is from the gospel of Luke, chapter 20, 19 through 26. The legal experts and chief priest wanted to arrest him right then because they knew he had told this parable against them, but they feared the people. The legal experts and chief priest were watching Jesus closely and sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They wanted to trap him in his word so they could hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. They asked him, Teacher, we know that you are correct in what you say and teach. You don't show favoritism, but teach God's way as it really is. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Since Jesus recognized their deception, he said to them, Show me a coin whose image and inscription does it have on it. Caesar's, they replied. And he said to them, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and God what belongs to God. And they couldn't trap him in his words in front of the people, astonished by his answer. They were speechless. Receive our benediction for today. May the Son of Justice, who was born, shine in the hearts of all those that love him. And may fresh devotion again rise in the hearts of all that celebrate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.